Watch out. Watch out. A 30-something is about to talk about TikTok. Hi there. Welcome to Plain English. I'm Jeff. JR is the producer, and this is episode 204 of Plain English, the best podcast for practicing English. That's because we go at a bit of a slower speed than native speed, so you can understand every word. And if you miss a word, not to worry, you can find a transcript of the program at plainenglish.com slash 204. Coming up today, TikTok has a billion downloads. If you don't know what that is, I will tell you about the latest craze to sweep the world. And I am cautioning you, this is all secondhand. I am not a TikTok user, but I did get some good input from JR, who is one. I have a funny quote about adults on social media, and the phrasal verb today is serve up. Imagine watching a 15-second video of a person dressed up in regular clothes, American country music is playing in the background, the guy jumps up, and the moment he lands on the ground, he is magically transformed into a cowboy. Now, do you think you could watch hundreds of of videos of different people recreating this exact scenario over and over and over again. If you think you can do it, then you are ready to join the 1 billion other users in the world who have TikTok. For the uninitiated, TikTok is a video sharing and social media app launched in 2017 by the Chinese company ByteDance. It provides a forum for users to create video content in small bites to share with others. And unlike most social networks, the intended audience of your TikTok posts are not your friends, but strangers. The app serves up one random video after another, and you, as a user, say whether you like the video or not. Over time, TikTok learns what you like. Now, you can also search for content by topic with hashtags. TikTok's content is heavy on the creation of snippets of video with musical accompaniment, and oftentimes the videos include dancing or costumes. Many TikTok users were originally members of an app called Musical.ly, where users could lip sync to their favorite songs and post them. TikTok bought that app, and the culture on TikTok is heavy on music and dancing from its heritage. As you might imagine, the app is wildly popular with teenagers and young adults. So popular, it has about a billion downloads. How do these 15-second videos become so popular? The younger users of TikTok have grown accustomed to receiving rapid-fire information on the internet. They are also used to filming themselves constantly, and they feed on likes and rewards of traditional social media network. TikTok leans into all these trends. Like other social media platforms, there is also a sense of accomplishment when a video generates a lot of likes. 15 seconds of content creation is very doable. 
And let's be honest, the expectations are pretty low. So practically anyone with a phone can participate. TikTok provides the tools to create and edit videos from right inside the app. So it makes the learning curve much shorter. Not only that, but the most creative youngsters see this as a viable career. Now, if you're laughing, stop. Instagram and YouTube didn't seem like viable careers when they first started either. One of the most popular features of TikTok is the user challenges. This is where a video becomes popular and other users will recreate it in their own way. The challenges become popular with hashtags. In the country music example I shared earlier, users play back the same country song and replay a similar scenario with their own style. The user, or sometimes even the user's pet, drinks a liquid labeled yee yee juice which transforms the person into a cowboy or a cowgirl. The song used in the challenge, which was made popular on TikTok, is Old Town Road, and it launched the artist into stardom, and it was on the Billboard Top 100 chart for a record-breaking 19 consecutive weeks. And I had no idea. Another popular challenge, the Get Up Challenge, is a dance challenge where users recreate the line dance by artist Blanco Brown and the song The Get Up. This could be today's version of the Macarena for those of you who are old enough to remember that one. No controversy, heated debates, or political strife, just people dancing and having a good time. Compared to other social media apps, TikTok does things a little differently. The closest comparable app to TikTok would most likely be the now defunct app Vine. Vine, like TikTok, appealed to younger audiences by providing a platform to share even shorter videos. Vine videos were just six seconds. Wherever the kids are, the corporations will follow, with mixed results. Chipotle, an American chain restaurant, is using the TikTok app to promote its Burrito Challenge by having users create a before and after video of themselves dressed up like a Chipotle burrito for Halloween to win prizes. I think that that sounds good. I think that would work better than whatever the political newspaper, the Washington Post, comes up with on TikTok. Other apps have found some interesting ways in which uh, their platforms can be useful in short formats. Douyin, the Chinese version of TikTok, also owned by ByteDance, is being used in travel videos. Some moderately popular travel destinations in China have seen their attendance soar after hitting it big on Douyin, for example. To me, the most interesting thing about TikTok is its use of artificial intelligence to determine what content to show you based on your likes, what you watch, and your location. So what you see on the app is what the machine thinks you would like the most in that moment. It not only learns what you like, but it analyzes other factors such as the time of day. What do you like to watch in the morning? What do you like to watch just before bed? Things like that. Not to spoil the fun, but a discussion of social media would not be complete if we didn't also touch on some of the grown-up implications of TikTok. One is the use of data, of course. 
TikTok's users are predominantly young. Many are really young, like not even teenagers yet. TikTok paid a fine to the U.S. government for collecting data on children and serving up some age-inappropriate content to kids. Social media and politics are often intertwined these days. And Western media is quick to point out the conspicuous absence of videos about protests in Hong Kong on this Chinese-owned app, whereas protests in other locations are widely featured in TikTok videos. I warned you at the beginning that I was a thirty-something attempting to talk about TikTok. So when I need to know what all the kids are doing these days, I consult Jr., who is twenty-something. That's at least a little closer. Jr. says you can open TikTok when you have nothing else to do. Otherwise, it's so addictive you'll watch TikTok all day. And you won't get any work done. Jr. has fine-tuned his preferences, so he usually gets videos about comedy or nature, the outdoors. I do not have TikTok, so I asked Jr. to perform an experiment. I asked him to open the app and tell me about the first three videos he saw. He sent me screen grabs of them. And two were videos of young people doing songs or dancing. The third video that came up was someone jumping off a cliff. I think later videos showed someone taking pearls out of mussels. So that is a quick peek into Jr's TikTok feed. He also explained to me that this is how the Baby Shark song got so popular. I asked him about Baby Shark after the crowd was singing it at a baseball stadium. That would be the Washington Nationals fans singing the Baby Shark song whenever Gerardo Parra comes to the plate. A couple of hellos today. I want to say hi to Abul Fazl from the city of Isfahan, Iran, and he is practicing English. To help in his career in IT, and a big hello to Gustavo and Arthur. They are brothers, eleven and thirteen years old, and they listen in the car with their dad on the way to school in Brazil. Now, one thing listeners consistently tell me is that they love the topics on this program, and if you ever find yourself thinking. I loved today's topic. I wish I could learn more about TikTok. Well, then you are in luck. Every Monday and Thursday, Jr. sends out an email with links to the English language articles that I use to prepare the show. It's a great way to learn more about your favorite episode topics and to practice your reading at the same time. If you'd like to practice your English reading and engage more with our fascinating topics, then make sure you're on our email list. Just visit plainenglish.com/mail m a i l and enter your details. Today's phrasal verb is to serve up. To serve up means to give something or to offer it. This is a tricky one to use, and I don't have any really good guidelines or rules for you on how to use serve up or when to use serve up instead of just serve. Now you normally say a person serves a meal. Or the bar bartender served me a glass of wine. You would say a person served in the military, 
or served as a volunteer at church or whatever. But when you say serve up, you're talking about taking something and giving it to someone else, almost making it an easy gift to that person. Now, here's how you heard it in the context of the videos that TikTok serves up. They serve videos up to their users. They give them to their users and they make it easy to consume. So at first, they served up videos from the general population to really young kids. Now, they only serve up age-appropriate videos, they say. You can say a funny movie served up some good laughs. It was Halloween last week in the U.S., and a lot of places served up a spooky and scary atmosphere, shops, restaurants, etc. Restaurants and cafes serve up pumpkin-flavored recipes this time of year. That means they feature them, they make them easy to consume. Starbucks always serves up pumpkin spiced lattes this time of year. Careful, you would say serve up for the company making these things available, but an individual barista at Starbucks would serve you your individual drink without the up. Candidates for office can serve up different proposals for fixing their towns or their country. You might say one candidate is serving up the same old proposals from the past. You could say a candidate is serving up a lot of excuses for bad behavior, or a person might serve up some innovative ideas for the future. TikTok serves up videos for users. Spotify serves up the newest music. The Great American Beer Fest in Denver serves up craft beer from around the world. They make it available and they make it easy to consume. Okay, here is the quote of the week. It's funny. It's an Instagram influencer talking about TikTok content made by adults. You know, earlier I said that I thought corporations would have mixed results trying to act in character on TikTok. And here is what Jack Wagner, an Instagram influencer, said. He said, I haven't seen one piece of content on there made by an adult that's normal and good. He said, to be a grown adult doing cute karaoke videos on an app and trying to make it go viral is odd behavior. (laughs) I think that's really funny. A lot of you have gotten to know me a bit, either just by listening or by chatting on WhatsApp or email or whatever, a few of you in person. But I think it's safe to say that I don't belong on TikTok, so I TikTok, sorry, I can't even say it. So I will refrain from this odd behavior. So you won't be able to find us on TikTok, but you can say hello on WhatsApp. Just go to plainenglish.com slash WhatsApp from your phone, and it will open a message right to me. I love hearing from listeners on there, so I hope you get a chance to say hello from WhatsApp. Tell me about your TikTok experiences if you have any. So that's all for today. Thanks for being with us. It is truly a pleasure and my favorite time of the week when I get to sit down and record these messages to you. We will be back, as always, on Thursday with another new episode And if you want to write your comments on TikTok, I did it again. I I did it again on TikTok. Make sure to go to plainenglish.com slash 204 and leave me a message in the comments. JR and I reply to all the comments on the website. If you can understand this program, then you might be ready to speed things up a little bit with Plain English Plus. 
As a member of Plain English Plus, you can listen to a fast version of this very program in which I will attempt to say TikTok and not TikTac. I'm recording it next. A lot of members listen to both. They listen to the slow version and the fast version first to understand the topic, and then they listen to the fast version to understand how it sounds at full speed. I know some of you speed the program up on your podcast player, but if you're really serious about improving your listening, there's no substitute for the full speed version. And of course, you have the transcript available, and the plus transcripts include our instant translations into seven languages. So what are you waiting for? If you'd like to speed things up, come join us at plainenglish.com slash plus. P-L-U-S. See you on Thursday. <laughs>